Hey, Miss Elder here from Flint Hill Elementary School for another math lesson. Today, we're using benchmark numbers to add and subtract. So the story we're gonna be using today is the 10 flashing fireflies. So it's a quick video, so we're just gonna watch that. So the lesson that we're gonna do is about insects in a jar. So Ben and Sarah have been collecting insects. So let's read the story. Ben and Sarah have four glass jars. So what I do is I draw my jars on my page so that I can put my, my, put my insects in the jars as I go. It helps me with my math. Ben and Sarah have one hour and 15 minutes to collect four different types of insects. That's why I have four jars. Ben and Sarah will put each type of insect in a glass jar. Ben and Sarah will round the number of each type of insect collected to the nearest 10 and let the extra insects go. We've been rounding to 10, so we know those 10 numbers, 10, 20, 30. We're not gonna collect that many, but we need to know these are benchmark numbers. We stop and are aware. So the rest of the insects are going to be let go. Ben and Sarah start collecting insects at one o'clock in the afternoon. I'm gonna remember that because that's got to be important. They collect 23 ants, 12 butterflies, 10 beetles, and 14 grasshoppers. What time do Ben and Sarah stop catching insects? It's question number one. So I'm gonna write that down because I wanna make sure that I answer that question. How many insects do Ben and Sarah let go from each jar? Okay, it's so very important for me to answer the question that's asked because I could tell how many insects are in each jar or how many insects are let go in all, but that's not what they're asking of me. So I need to read the problem carefully. 
My dad used to always tell me, read the problem. And if I didn't understand it, read the problem twice. Okay? Show all of your mathematical thinking. So this means I'm going to have to do something. So if you have a math journal, this is the perfect place to do this. I'm gonna quickly turn off the light so that you can see this better. And I'm gonna get a white pen so that I can put them in the jars in this dark, dark night. Clear away all that old thing. And I'm going to get my white pen. And I'm going to put some, put some fire, put some insects in my jars. Okay, now, since we've been working with base 10, I'm going to draw those base 10 rods that I've been using. So I look back at my problem and I see that I have 23 ants. So I'm going to put 23 in my first jar. Now, I'm not going to draw 23 dots because I'm in third grade. So I'm going to use a representation. So, one 10 rod, a second 10 rod, one, two, three, and three units. That's going to be my first jar. And I'm going to label it because this makes it easier for my teacher to understand what I'm doing. So I'm going to label it ants. Okay, so that my teacher knows I put the ants in this jar and I have the right number. So I'm going to go to my next jar, butterflies. Okay. I look back up in my problem and I spell it correctly because it was given to me. I'm expected to spell it right. Now, how many butterflies do they collect? Look back, 12. Okay. There's my 10 rod and 12 is a 10 rod and two ones. Okay, now, as you can see, it's going to be very easy for me to get rid of everything that's not a 10 number, since I'm using rods as my benchmark. You can already see this is going to be simple. So my next jar are beetles. So I'm going to label it. And there are only 10 beetles, so I'm just going to use that one rod. Simple. The last jar is grasshoppers. So I'm going to label it. Okay, I ran out of room on my white. So my grasshoppers are down here. So I have 14 grasshoppers. So that's a 10 and four ones. So a rod. And one, two, three, four. The little ones like that. Okay. So here's my entire problem. There were two th two questions that it asked me to answer. First question was what time do Ben and Sarah stop catching insects? Well, I look back at my problem because I want to get it right. And I see that they started collecting insects at one o'clock one o'clock in the afternoon, and they caught insects for one hour and 15 minutes. Now, I know that the hours count by ones. So if it was one o'clock and I go another hour, it's going to be two o'clock. That's simple enough, but now I've got another 15 minutes. 
So I think about my clock, and I know I've got one hour and another 15 minutes. So 15 minutes after the hour of two would be 2.15. So that's the answer to the first question. The second question is, how many insects do they let go? So, like I said, we've set this up well, so it's gonna be simple. I look back and I see my ants. I'm going to keep the 10 rods because those are my benchmark numbers and I'm gonna let everything else go. So how many am I letting go from the first jar? One, two, three. How many am I letting go from the second jar? These are the only ones left. One, two. And as I look at the third jar, the only thing is my benchmark number, which is a 10. So I'm not getting rid of anything there. The grasshoppers have 14. So I come and I look and I count one, two, three, four. So now I'm gonna add those three numbers together. Three plus two plus four. So I know, I'm gonna add the two big numbers first three and four. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to use my doubles principle. Three and three I know is six. So doubles plus one would be three, and another three and another one, which is four. So it's three plus four, so it's one more than six, so it's seven. And then I'm gonna add one, because, oh, no, I have to add two. So check, always check your work. I'm gonna add two more. So seven plus two, I skip to the next odd number. Seven plus two is nine. So I'm gonna let go nine insects. So now I have answered both questions. In an exemplar, not only do I have to answer the questions, but then I go back through and I explain to my teacher what I did. All of the math that I used all of the strategies that I used, because she can see what I did on paper, but she doesn't know why I did those things. If I put three plus four plus two, she's not gonna know that I'm so smart that I used a double strategy, and a doubles plus one, and then I skip to the next odd number. So I want to tell her all this. All right, so when you're finishing up, after you have gotten both answers, go back and write and tell your teacher, first, I did this. And always an exemplar, first thing I do is I draw a picture, all right? I draw a picture, I draw a diagram, or I draw a chart. Then I found the solution. How did I find the solution? I used some math. So I tell my teacher all the things I did, going all the way back to kindergarten. There were odd numbers, there were even numbers, and I know how to use them. Now. For our third graders, we have been working on benchmark numbers, so we want to make sure that our teacher realizes that we use those benchmark numbers, which are in this case are tens, and we rounded to the nearest 10 in every case. There were always less than four, four or less, I'm gonna round down. I didn't get to round up because I can't let anything go if I don't have it. So that worked out nicely, all right. So, tell your teacher how smart you are, read it back, appreciate what hard work you've done, and we'll hope to see it soon. You can turn it in at elder.catherine at newton.k12.ga.us. Thank you so much for joining us, and we hope you have a great day.